see the sun, the S-U-N, but see the S-O-N through it all. Amen. Amen. I see the sun through all of this. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, he knows it all. I was uh, looking at, uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, no, I, I just want to start this on she time. She took a stop and just looked at me. But, but I was thinking about uh, Second Chronicles in that verse in 20, 15 to 17, where we saw that King Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah were just at a standstill. They were stymied because they, they, were, they were under pressure and under attack. And the Lord sent a message by uh, Jehaziel uh, to give them for King Jehoshaphat. He said, don't be afraid or dismayed by this great multitude. Huh? He said, uh, the, the battle is not yours, it's God's. Amen? Amen. That message is for somebody, but it's for all of us, I know. That battle that you're going through, that we're going through, don't even belong to us. Mm -hmm. God's going to get us through it. Did you know that? The, 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 the scripture says... You won't even have to fight about it. You won't even have to worry about it. He said to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Stand still and see the. Hey, once you're grounded in the war, in the Lord, didn't He give us a sermon saying, "Hunker down, yes. hunker down in the foxhole, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord." Amen. Amen. Sometimes you're under pressure, like in Vietnam when the Tet Offensive was going on. And these soldiers had to hunker down in one place while the enemy crossed over their heads, over the ramp above them for I don't know how long it took for these thousands of troops that could have obliterated them. They just had to hunker down. That's what we do in the Lord. We just stand still and watch yes. and see what the Lord stand does. Amen. Still. He'll Hallelujah. turn those situations against one another. They'll cancel each other out for your good. And yeah. his glory. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So whatever it is, whether it's sickness, whether it's people coming against you, whether it's a, uh, a, a future, a trying situation, hunker down in the Lord. Amen. Stand still and watch what the Lord does. Amen. Watch and see what he does. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So uh, let's go to him in prayer right now. Amen. Father, we thank you again for this time. We thank you for this message, Lord God, about what it means to know you, Lord. So be with us today as we are glean what you've given us uh, this week, this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to continue on. As you know, our sermon series by now is Knowing God is Knowing Truth. We should That's right. It. We are in uh, the eighth segment. We're in segment number eight. In this sermon topic about the importance of having God in our lives. And uh, especially when it comes to knowing the truth. Amen. Uh, because that's really uh, what knowing God means. And uh, so I'm not surprised he has us in this holding pattern. We need to examine these things. Okay. What it really means to know God. We can talk about it. But we, I always say don't just talk about it. We need to walk about it. Amen. amen. We need to carry it with us. Amen. amen. So um, the word tells us also, in, uh, if we want to know what it means, in the book of Romans 3, uh, verse 4, to let God be true and every man a liar. That's what it says. See, we can't depend on mankind to give us truth, can we? Can we really? Mm -hmm. We can't depend on men or women to always be true or always exhibit what is true. But knowing That's God and having a true relationship with him, as he's manifested in your life, okay, that's what's going to get you to know the truth in all circumstances. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is just truth that we're talking about. I know some people who have read uh, the Bible. I know some people who, who have been Christians for decades, okay? And really, come to find out, I've had a couple of them, a couple of people honest enough to say that, you know what, I really didn't get it until COVID. I, I, that's what people have told me. Maybe they told you too. They said, you know what, since it's COVID time, Pastor Joel, I, I, you know what, now I see things. I see some things that I, I didn't recognize this at first. You see what I mean? We can say we know God, but do we really know him? We can say we know truth, but sometimes God has to have you hunker down. Stand still now. Mm -hmm. See the salvation of the Lord. You might have to go through some things to see. Okay? 
But uh, uh, so it's just not just reading the Bible, but it's experiencing God in your lives. Amen. Amen. Experiencing God in our lives. But still, it requires more than us just saying that we know God or claiming that God is in our life. You know People tell you that. They'll say, oh, yeah, I know God. And you don't even know which God they're talking about sometimes. Mm. Because how can you have God in your life and not know him? Is that possible? Is it possible to have God in your life and not really know him? To really have God in your life, okay? I'll give you an example. I've got many cousins. Many. Many. Many cousins. I've got people that call me and say, do you know that your cousin is on so-and-so? So, who, 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 who is he? Who is she? Y'all cousins, okay? I've got many cousins. Maybe you do too. I've got great, yes. many great nephews. I've got great nieces in my family. We're all related, but guess what? Somehow I don't know them. <laughs> I don't know them, okay? It's a cousin, uh, because, hey cousin. Because quite frankly, I've never even met them. They're on all parts of the country. Maybe you have some that, that you, maybe you know all yours, but see, I come from a big family. And I've got some that I don't know him, okay? So, and you know what, what it means is we've not, we've not spent time together. Mm -mm. Huh? Certainly not quality time. After all, we've never really, really gotten together. Do you see what I mean? We can say we know somebody. You can somehow be related and yet not know that person. Am I right? You're right. Okay? You can be related... And not have a relationship. That's true. Yeah, the, the word, the relation, a relationship. You can be related and not have a relationship with the person. Where they're, uh, they're just not in your life day to day. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. You don't see them often enough, if at all. Okay? Well, that's the same paradigm that I'm trying to get to. That's the same example uh, that applies in certain ways when it comes to our claim to know God and having God in our lives. If we say God is in our lives, we ought to know God. Amen? Amen. Amen? Okay. That's, uh, uh, that means we ought to be able to say we spend time with God, don't Amen. we? We ought to be able, not like those relatives, as distant relatives, we ought to be able to, to say we spend time with God on a regular basis, right? On a consistent basis, amen? He says to seek me with all of your heart. And when you seek me with your whole heart, you'll find me. He said, I'll bring you back from your captivity. That's what he says in Jeremiah 12, 14. He says, I'll bring you back from these things, amen? Jeremiah 29, verses uh, 12 and 14. So he tells you these things. On a daily basis, we need to commune with him. Because that's how you really come to know a person, Amen. isn't it? Yes. You see that person all the time. When you live in the same house, when you live in the same apartment, think about your family that you grew up with. You share the same room. You share the same kitchen utensils, okay? Man, oh man. When you live with somebody, uh, come on now. When you live with somebody, you, live with someone. you wind up viewing their sleeping habits, right? <laughs> and their waking habits, right? You get to know somebody. Some of you have had roommates. Some good and some may not have, some may have left much to be desired. I remember when I first went to college and I put, I, I was in a dorm at first. And I came in my room, I was there first. It was a two-bedroom dorm, and I was there first, so I claimed my desk. I had my TV set, the little TV set that I was going to use in my freshman year in Iowa, and I, I went in there and put everything together, and I went out to have uh, lunch, and when I came back, there was a guy in my room. He had his feet on my desk. He was watching my TV. <laughs> he was six foot five, 320 pounds, defensive tackle. Named Coley Calhoun. I'll mention him because he's probably watching. And uh, I at first said he got a lot of nerve sitting at my desk watching my TV. But you know what? We turned out to be the best of friends, and we're still mm -hmm. friends to this day. Big Coley. We just call him CC. Coley Calhoun. Well, that was a good thing. Now, but you see, it could have went the other way. 
<laughs> you know, because I didn't yeah, know the Lord see. back then. But uh, he was, uh, uh, it didn't. But I'm just saying, you don't get to, when you move in and when you're with somebody day to day, that's when you really get to know them. Okay, that's when you can say, I know that person. This is especially true with family members, isn't that right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And by the way, are we supposed to be then in the family of God? Don't we call ourselves children of God? Are we in the family, the kingdom, the family of God? Amen. So we should, of course, know the Lord. And it follows that as believers, we need to know God. And if we know God, we know that entails knowing truth. Amen. That's how you can tell if you know God. Because if we've, uh, uh, as we've learned, we've learned that God is truth. Amen. He tells us that. You've heard Jesus say in John 14 and 16, we said, uh, keep saying it. He's the what? Way. The truth. The and truth. The life. And the life. We know he's, he's true. He is the truth. He's the embodiment of truth. John 16, 13, Jesus says, who is the son of God, he says that uh, uh, and when he comes, the spirit of truth will guide you into all truth, right? That's what Jesus himself says. So we can plainly see that not only does God serve to lead us to all truth, but God is the complete source of truth. He's the essence of truth. We need to know that, okay? And get this, he's willing to communicate he is willing and able to communicate and disseminate truth for salvation to who? All people. All people. God is willing to tell you, to teach you truth, to lead you truth to the truth. Okay? He came that, that none should perish. Okay? So this is all part of God's makeup. And, and know that Jesus making himself available to all people means uh, uh, not only those who want to do right, but even those who want to do wrong. God will reveal himself to them if, what? If they turn from their sins and accept him. Is he not a forgiving God? Amen, he is. That's the truth. You see, God is truth. He's not, he doesn't, he's not truth by man's standards, but by his divine standards. Amen? Amen. The truth, if we turn from sin. What a blessing that is that we all have a shot at eternity. We all have a chance to be saved. We all uh, uh, can, can, can dwell with the one true God if we will but accept him and come to know him. That's big. That means that there are some people watching this who are going to watch this who may be watching from prison. There are some people that... Uh, Locked down. Yes, the pastor says, or oh, locked down. That may be set free with the words that are coming out right now because the Lord wants you to be free. There are some people out here who have done things, who are on the lam, who are on the scam, who, who are, are shady characters. God wants you to know that he is the God of truth, and if you follow him, he'll set you free as well. And that's the truth, okay? We need to know that. God, that people need to know that God won't turn you away. Some of the things you've done, and you, 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 yes, you, you're ashamed of those things, and rightly you should be, but God says, I can clean you up. I can fix you up. I can pick you up. I can lift you up. He can turn you around, okay? Amen. Because Amen. he is the God of truth, but you've Amen. got to get to know him. But now let's look at this concept of knowing God and knowing the truth from an even deeper level, a level that will force us to take a good look at our individual walks and see how they stack up, see how we stack up in, when, when we do things uh, which point to whether or not we really know God. So what factors are necessary in order for believers to come to know God? I'll tell you right now again. Because we've spoken on this before, many occasions, using various scriptures. So let's just do this. Let's go back to one fairly well-known scripture. I'm sure you all uh, may know about this scripture. You've heard it before. We go over it quite a bit. Pastor John Lisa, tell us what it says. It's real short. In James 4, 7. Now, we're just going to look at this very simple scripture. You all know it already because I've said it, but read it anyway, Pastor. James 4, 7 says, Therefore, Please. submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Okay, I'm going to stop it right there. We know the rest of it, right? 
Draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. You cleanse your hands, you evil doers, everything. We're not going to go there. We're going to stick with that one part. Submit to God, resist the devil, he will flee from you. Three words are illuminated in this verse. Three words, okay? Those three words that we need to look at, that we need to see clearly are what? Submit to God, okay? We need to see them in the spirit and understand what it means. You must submit. I must submit. We all must submit to God. That's one of those things that comes about when you are in a true relationship with God. You understand that you've got to submit to him. No doubt about it. Now, I know we go through some things. We're always trying to get our way. Isn't that what children do? You tell them to go to bed at 10 o'clock or go to sleep at 9 and show's not over till 9 and or go to sleep at 8, whatever it is, they're going to push it, right? They're going to push the envelope and try to get what they can, okay? You can tell them you're going to have one piece of candy, they want another piece of candy. We're going to try to push our way. That's how we are as human beings, okay? But this says you've got to submit to God, mm -hmm. then resist the devil, and he'll flee from you, okay? So if you're in a, now we're Christians, we're not children, we're children of God, but let's, let's grow up now. Let's say we're Forget the child example. Now we're, we're adults. We're, we're trying to get with God. We're trying to uh, deepen our walk with God. We're trying to come to uh, know him. Then we know we have to submit to him, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this should come as no surprise. See, there's no way around it. You, uh, uh, it should come as no surprise to anybody. Do you remember when you were in grade school and, and you got a different teacher every year? That's how it was in Chicago. When you're going from seventh grade, you next year you're going to go into eighth grade. And some of your, maybe your brothers or sisters had a certain teacher and they said, who do you have? You said, well, I, I had, I had Miss Brown in eighth grade. In seventh grade, I still remember Miss Overby who hit me in the chest one day. She was a black belt. She's an older lady, but she had a black belt way, way back in the 60s. And she punched me in the chest and it hurt. Yeah. Okay. They did that back in those days. Well, in eighth grade, I had a teacher named Miss Brown. And I was in a, 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 some type of college prep type of high school class where they gave you some very intricate stuff to learn. So it was considered a top eighth grade. Didn't mean anything at the time because even at our school, when you're in a top class, the school was so underprivileged that you were just average everywhere else. So, so anyway. We didn't have the equipment. So I went to this class and I found out uh, that Miss Brown smoked a pipe. I had never seen an older woman smoke a pipe. But she, she, she smoked a pipe and she wore those stockings that kind of roll up at the knee. <laughs> you know, the real, the, the sort of, I'm not, I, I hope I can say that, you know. Uh, I just mean that's how she dressed. She sort of bow legged and she had a, her, her face was like a bulldog. She and she and she smoked a pipe and she wouldn't smoke it in class, but she had that pipe sitting on her dress, oh, on yes. her dress desk, sitting on her desk. So you knew that kids come in class and say, who smokes a pipe? They didn't know who the teacher was, and we're looking for a man to come in, you know, a manly man with a pipe. And here comes Miss Brown, and she was a mean woman. Pass down, Lisa. No, she knew Miss Brown. Douglas High School, 1968, 67. Well, you're up there with the smart kids. I wasn't up there. I didn't know her. Well, that was a price to pay for being <laughs> smart. That's why kids were smart, because we had a teacher like Miss Brown that scared you into intelligence, okay? <laughs> <laughs> she, she put the I fear in up you. There. I didn't know about Miss Brown, any woman school. smoke a pipe at the age, she must have been 67 uh, back then. But any woman like that, you're going to pay some attention to what she said. But, but I'm just saying... When you when you when you uh, uh, were in a class, you knew uh, uh, that you had to do what the teacher expected, right? Why? Because you wanted to pass the grade, you wanted to pass the test, right? You couldn't come in Miss Brown's class and go by your standards. Am I right? You couldn't go to your teacher's class and say, "I'm going to do homework when I want to do it. I'm going to turn in any kind of old work." Oh yeah and pass this class, 
you had to show up at class, okay? You had to come to the class, amen? In other words, we had to submit to the rules set forth through this teacher. I think, I, I think I've said it all. And I know, I know that was then, and nowadays it's not like that in school. Mm -mm. We have teachers that are being forced to submit to uh, society yes. and, and, and student standards, okay? They, they get bullied by students. They like get that, beaten and attacked like by students. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw that the other day. Uh, a student beat a, a, a supervisor down, could have killed her, hit her 15 times as she was already unconscious. A big 260 pound looking guy while people just watched. So, uh, hmm. But anyway, thank God for God that the world's value system might change, but God never changes. That's Amen. what I'm getting to. God never changes. So the fact remains that we have to submit to God. Amen. And his divine authority. We have to submit to God in everything, just like it says in James 4, 7. And I thought I'd better add that clause, in everything. I added that in everything clause because I know some folks are mumbling right now saying, well, I submit to God and I'm submitted to God. That's not me. I I, I got saved. I'm, I'm I, you know, I, I go to church. I, I, I go to Zoom. I, I I feed the homeless. I smile. I say, God bless you every time somebody sees me. I say, God bless you. I look at my neighbor across the yard and I say, God bless you. It, I'm nice to strangers. That's all good. Those are all good works, right? Those are good. It's good to, it's good to, to do those things. Uh, but there are some other ways in which we are to submit to God as well, right? We want to look at some of those ways. Because James says, submit to God, mm -hmm. resist that devil, he's going to flee from you, okay? So one way we must submit to God is when we get in the flesh, amen? Can we submit to him when things don't go our way? Will we submit to God when we're put on the bubble, when we're put on the spot, when somebody demeans you, lies about you, lies to you, something like that? I said in our Wednesday Bible study class, for those of you who were there, we've got to have what? A fireman's motto. The fireman's motto, which is what? Always be ready. Always okay? be ready. We must always be ready. Uh, Luke 9, 23 tells us that Jesus says in himself, you desire that anyone desiring to come after me must, must do what? Deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. Be ready to go daily. Be ready to follow God daily. Be ready to do what he says in any situation. Amen. You got to be able to do that. Okay. That's a fireman's Motto, that's a fireman's attitude. When the bell goes off, we got to go off. I don't mean go crazy, but I mean get going. Amen? Get to doing what God wants us to do. But actually, we should be practiced in it already. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what it means when it says submit to God. Resist the devil. Have you submitted to God? Have you done the things he wants you to do? Or are you, if you, if he said, Put a, put a sheet of paper on, on the refrigerator. That's why we know this thing. Put it by the food and we'll notice it in this household. <laughs> put it on the refrigerator. Put a line down the middle and say what I did for myself today and what I did for God today. He told us to do that one time. You'd be surprised the things you do for yourself and talking about you doing it for God. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised the time you can spend uh, uh, listening to music or watching TV or doing something else, even in your repose, when we should be doing God's work. You'd be surprised. So, but it says that we are to uh, uh, submit to God. And when we, the more we submit then, the more we can resist the devil. Okay. Amen. And, and uh, as true believers, as true disciples, that's what we're supposed to do. We must be able to serve God and submit to him. That's 24 seven. When the bell sounds spiritually, even in my dreams, even in your dreams, you're dreaming about something that you're doing that should please God. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, it happens. The more you, you, you'll see your dreams are not those dreams you used to have. Yes, we won't yes, talk yes, about yes. those dreams you used to have. You still may have some of those way out, woo, wacky dreams. You can't help with your dreams. You. But for the most part, it's you're, so, you. 
you sort of are what you eat. You eat a whole lot. You eat enough of the Lord. You he gonna be coming out of you. Okay. You 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 spend your time in the Lord. He's gonna be just oozing out of you. People gonna say, you know what? Some uh, they either gonna be comfortable with you, but most time they're gonna be uncomfortable with you because you got so much of Him in you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need to think about. So let's see again. Let's look. Let's look at the family structure in this lesson plan. Um, so this is what he gave me. You all know the way people behave in church, and, and, and most times how people behave in church is different than they, the way they behave at home. I think that's, that's pretty constant with all people because you're most comfortable at home. You let your hair down at home. You do what you want to do at home to some degree. But, I mean, many people come to church doing everything from, from praising to raising holy hands. Amen. Amen. But... Uh, uh, Outside of the sanctuary and in the confines of, of, of somebody's own home, sometimes those, those hands are not always holy. Amen. Amen. And there are times when those holy hands that are raised in church are used to slap somebody upside the head at home. Okay, mm -hmm. to beat on a, a spouse or to uh, 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 discipline children too roughly, uh, uh, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, not submitting to God all the way. So we need to know that the devil doesn't want you to submit to God. He wants you submitted to him. Amen. Okay? Understand that. The devil wants you to submit to him and his demons. And one way he does that, one way he accomplishes that is by getting families to turn on one another. Getting families and spouses to argue with one another. Okay? Mm -hmm. Being impatient towards one another. And all those types of things. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's uh, Ephesians 4, 1, where Paul says, I, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you uh, uh, to, uh, to, to be uh, lowly and uh, forgiving and different things like that mm -hmm. to each other, okay? Mm -hmm. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit of the bond of peace. He starts talking about those things to... Uh, uh, to be patient with one another, basically, mm -hmm. okay? The devil doesn't want you. God wants you to do that, but the accuser doesn't, mm -hmm. you see? To submit to God may seem simple. It may seem simple enough, but it's uh, it, because it's pretty self-explanatory uh, that the devil will, it will manipulate you. The devil will manipulate you. He, he, even the staunchest Christian, the one who says, I know the word and I follow the word, the devil still will try to get you to disobey God. All right? Mm -hmm. He'll use the same scripture God gives you and try to turn that thing around to get you to disobey the Lord. Okay? Let's, let's, let's move from James 4, 7 for a minute. We'll get back to it. But let's go to another scripture. And I want to, I want to look at this. Because uh, I want to look at marriage for a minute. I went somewhere the other day and a man was telling me, he said to pray. I picked up something and he knew I was a pastor and uh, I think the Lord just sent me there because the place was closing up and the chairs were already on the table. And he had his children there. He waited till I got there and uh, I was on a food run and I went to pick up the food and he said, pray for us. We're having a, we're having a, uh, my church is having a meeting about marriages. He said that there are a lot of young people married. And they're having a lot of problems in their marriages. And the Lord had just told us something about marriages. Okay, so I want to go there for a minute. Let's go to Ephesians 5, 22 to 24. And I'm going to ask Pastor Annalisa to uh, read that for us. Please. Ephesians 5, 22, 24 says this. Why? This is my favorite. Wives. <laughs> <laughs> you, you better repent. I'm going to your favorite. You better... <laughs> I'm sorry. Read Father. that. I know you're being funny. He knows your heart. He knows it's my It's beating real fast, Wives. too. <laughs> Wives. Wives. Submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. And 24 says, Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives, the wives be to their own husbands in everything. All the, right. That's it. Do I stop there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to save you some grief. Just stop <laughs> right there and have a seat. Wife, wife. <laughs> no, no. Okay. So this is very straightforward, right? 
Wives are to submit to their own husbands, that's what it says, as to the Lord. Now, we know there were rules back in those days. There were rules back in, in that day, in, in Paul's day, and this had to come out for a reason. But understand that it is in the New Testament, and a lot of, still, the word is, is true. We can't get around it. Uh, this is the way God wrote it. The, the husband is head of the wife, as Christ is head and savior of the body. It says further that just as the church is to be subject to Christ, so then wives are to be subject to their own husbands in everything. That's what it says. All right. So, uh, like I said, we're going to look at marriage for a minute because Satan really doesn't want us to know God's truth, even concerning God's word, even concerning marriages. Uh, 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 but that's a sermon for that's a that's a topic for a whole sermon by itself. And I can't get into all that. But we just want to slice a piece of this off so it may help somebody down the road, okay? So, uh, uh, so Jesus Christ is the head of the church and savior of the body. It says further that just as the church is to be subject to Christ, so then likewise, uh, uh, wives are to be subject to their own husbands in everything. So how does this work? How do we apply that to James 4, 7, submit to God, resist the devil. It's all related, you see. It relates to James. If you ask the question, does it relate? Surely it does. Because clearly wives submitting to their husbands are in keeping with Ephesians 5, 22, as well as James 4, 7. There is submission here. It's right there in these texts, as well as in other areas of the word. We try to get into that a little bit. Uh, but what happens, this is the question, what happens if a husband practices unrighteousness? I didn't say he makes a mistake. I said, what happens when a husband practices unrighteousness or fails to operate according to the will of God? Okay, those are questions that people don't want to ask. What if the husband belittles, disparages? What if he assaults the wife? Even what if he just says, I just wanted to rape my wife? It's been done. Am I right? It's done in other countries. It's been done right here in America. OK, I can tell you stories of, of uh, calls I had as a police officer. Oh, that I probably could have been fired for because a man did that to a woman. OK, and she was too afraid to deal with him. But guess who wasn't? But I didn't know the Lord. And uh, but I did give him every opportunity to get it right. And he could take the first swing. The rest were mine. And I, I, and I say that because I, I have a problem with bullies. Uh, uh, so now I'm so glad that I know the Lord. I'm so glad I know the Lord. Help us, Jesus. So, so this is where the devil comes in with lies and manipulating people's emotions to say that a woman must, in a sense, be a slave to her husband. Okay. But is that what the word is saying? That she must submit to all the whims and impulses of a, that a husband may harbor, even in his fleshly heart, his fleshly nature. So the man seeks to enforce these, this so-called authority at will, regardless of his repugnant conduct. Is that what it means? Think about it. Thinking is his God-given right. Okay, well, it says in everything. Okay, so let's go from there. And get this, uh, certainly, I, I'm, let me say this too. In all fairness, each party in a relationship bears their own responsibility to, to do certain things. God's not going to give you a green light and not give that other person a green light. He's not going to, he, he is not a respected person. He's not going to say, you can't do this and then let other people do it. Okay, God is fair. Amen. So uh, sometimes some women can behave as bad or worse than any man I've seen. We've all seen that, okay? But we want to just look at these particular scriptures for now regarding the man's role in leading, okay? And see how that applies to submitting to God. Okay, you're the boss. You're the leader. You're the head, okay? But let's see how it works on the other end to submit. Let's go one more scripture verse. Let's go to Ephesians 5.25. Pastor, read that one, please. You might like that one a little this, better. I, I, this is my one Go ahead. That's favorites. the one you were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Dimples. Go ahead. 
Okay, uh, Ephesians 5, 25 says, Husbands, mm -hmm. husbands love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Okay, good enough. Let's stay right there for a minute. Okay, now we see this, we see this act of submission from a different lens now, don't we? Huh? We see it from God's lens and not something that Satan can manipulate so easily. You see, the Lord put these truths through Paul to show that husbands are to love their wives just as Christ loved the church. And how did Christ love the church? Christ loved the church so much that he died for us, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He laid down his life for his bride. Okay, mm -hmm. so these verses stress that we must be like Christ, willing to give ourselves our very lives for that wife. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what it's saying. That's what it's saying. But she won't do what I say. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you love her that much? Wait, well, wait a minute. See, my food is burnt every day. Uh, oh, but, but, but wait a minute. Do you love her that much? Well, she talked to a friend more than she talked to me. I can relate to that one. But do you still love her? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got to love her. Yeah. You got to love her. Amen. That's what the Lord said. What did they do to Jesus? They didn't even want to see him coming. When he was trying to help, they crucified him. Put nails in his hand. He still exhibited that love. You mean to tell me that's how I got to be about my wife? That's my life. Well, yeah, she's got to be the life, brother. That's what the word is saying Amen. for that bride. Now, let's go to one other text of scripture concerning the subject of submitting uh, that's needed. This is needed, too. Let's go to 1 Peter. Let's go to 1 Peter and let's go to uh, chapter 3, verse 7. Pastor. I'm going to tell you where all this is going. 1 Peter 3, 7 says, Husbands, mm -hmm. likewise, dare... Oh, I mean, I got to stand up with this one. I like this one. My favorite <laughs> you like too. that one, too? Yeah. Well, I can see you learning something. Go ahead. Husbands, <laughs> husbands, husbands, husbands. Likewise. likewise, dwell with them with understanding, mm -hmm. giving honor to the wife mm -hmm. as to the weaker vessel, mm -hmm. and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers Woo. may not be... And Did you hear that, fellas? Did you hear that? The man it's is still that, reading. <laughs> it says, that, <laughs> read that again, make sure it's right. No, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Okay. You know, sometimes it, they're, we they're want to get, to sometimes get we want to say, what version is that? <laughs> Quick, fellas, find another version as, and see if we can find As being heirs <laughs> together of okay. the grace of life that your prayers may not be thank you, thank you, thank you, Pastor. Pastor Lord, wife, sister friend. Amen. Now that phrase, to dwell with the wife, never mind the, the weaker vessel, okay? We got to see in what aspect that's applicable. But we won't go into that right now. Uh, we know that physically, uh, women are, are, are designed weaker than men, but nowadays, <laughs> if you... If you see something women I've seen, you spiritually, may, we're talking about it's the we're spiritual. We're talking about spiritual. Right? Look spiritual, at that inflectionally. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but we know what the Lord means right here. That Where did Brother Ron come from? The weaker vessel. <laughs> the weaker, come on laughing. Uh, pastor, pastor. But, but the weaker vessel. Now, uh, that phrase, to dwell with the wife. Let's talk about that phrase. That phrase, to dwell with the wife is imperative, meaning that it instructs the husband to be in a position of headship according to God's order. This is according to God's divine order, but also committed to do what? Love, care for his wife, and true understanding. True understanding of his position and, and, and his role in headship, being the head of the wife as the weaker vessel. I'm going to tell you something, fellas. Can't win. Can't win being too hard. Because they, the women got a weaker vessel, a weaker vessel cop out. They can all whip that, they can play that weaker vessel card. <laughs> you know how I know? Because when I was doing police work, whenever the, the woman would call and the man had to go to jail, he went. He just went. 
the, the cops always took him to jail, and most times he deserved to go. But I saw a man, and I was already ready to take him to jail because he said, my wife is doing this to me, she's doing that to me, she beats me, she does this, she does that. The man was about six feet tall. The man was a good 180 pounds. Looked like he could have been a wide receiver or something. And he'd sit here telling me that his wife, he, he had to defend himself because his wife was attacking him. And I'm like, uh, sir, is she here? He said, no, she's not here. She, she ran off. She drove off in my car while when, when, you, when you showed up. She pulled off. And I'm like, this guy's just lying. I said, well, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. He said, I want to arrest it. I said, well, I... I I need to talk to her. So if this happens again, here's my number. Call me back. As I said that, I heard a car pull up, room, and a woman got out the car. She looked and saw me. She jumped back in the car. What a mean looking woman. <laughs> she, she was mean looking. Her arms were bigger than mine. She was looking like, oh, police. She just like, <laughs> jumped back in the car. And he, I said, and I looked at him. He said, that's her. <laughs> So I said, let's take a report. I said, I'm <laughs> I said, have a seat. So again, most times we see that, uh, that, that that is not that way. They'll play that card. But there are some women that, of course, uh, uh, are a little, a little different. And this woman was a little different. But we mean spiritually, we, we, you have to look in the spirit. Okay? That type of thing. So this is important that husbands adhere strictly to this call, as this verse is saying, because guess what happens if you don't? Let's go back to 25. Let's go to the end of it. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, not 25. Let's go back to uh, verse 7, verse 7 in First Peter 3. Uh -huh. It says, husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, as being heirs together, Heirs together mean that you both inherited this position. You both are working together, okay, of the grace of life. You, you, we're supposed to, to, to spend life together, to be heirs that way, that your prayers may not be hindered. So when you go against this, you think God's going to hear your prayers? You think God, God's going to? How can you submit to God, resist the devil, if the Lord's not hearing your prayer? Because of something that was done in your household, in your marriage, and not operating correctly. Now, it doesn't mean that he's not going to bless the person who is suffering. Their prayers are being heard. He hears the, the, the effective and fervent prayers of the righteous. It's only when you're being unrighteous. You see what I mean? So we have to be careful that we're operating. Don't take that and say, I'm the head and that's the way it is. You know? I'm the head and I go to bed. No, we can't do that, okay? We got to, we got to be able to say, well, yeah, the Lord put me in this position, but with that position comes responsibility. Amen. With that position comes patience. Amen. Uh, test taking. He's going to test you more than he, I'm, I'm telling you, people think they have, a, you, you think you've been tested? Get married. <laughs> Get married. <laughs> You're really going to be tested. People saying they want to be married. I said, uh -huh, I dare you. <laughs> because you're going to be tested. Huh, Dave? You're going to be tested instead. Okay? <laughs> yeah, well, that's the way it is. And I'm not just saying from a man's standpoint, but when you're the head, you're going to be tested. Brother Terry, Brother Johnny, y'all know what I'm talking about. Brother Rob, you knew what He's I was talking you. about. <laughs> so, the tests come. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And it's saying right both here parts. on both yes. parts, both ways. I said we, we, we I want to talk about this part today so we can get some things straight that your prayers may not be hindered. Oh, man. Mm. You don't want to be in a situation like that. And God not even hear your prayers. Mm. We need to look at it as submitting to God and let everything else flow mm -hmm. from there. Amen. Submit to God. See, when you make it personal. And you let your emotions get in the way, you can't see God because your flesh is in the way now. Uh huh. She moved my stuff again. <laughs> huh. I got one ink pen, and that's the one she using. <laughs> she got 20 ink pens. <sighs> you know, I have certain pens that I write with y'all. 
certain, certain pen. You know, I do everything longhand. You know, I'm a dinosaur. And you know, that pen I know, the one I need at that time, I know where to find it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you see these pens? These are all herbs. I ain't got one they of these, y'all. <laughs> they were mine, but you know, I, I said, you take them. Take them, get, take them. We just, and them angels are sitting down with the clipboards and watch him, Lord. Watch him. Did he pass or fail? So, so uh, uh, again, again, this is this is this is the help. This is the this is for help. And this, and all this means knowing God and knowing truth. This is what we're talking about. Okay? Don't expect it to be simple. Not when the adversary is looking and prowling about to get men to be so narrow minded. But to get you to be dogmatic, to get you to be disrespectful, the devil will play you like a fiddle. You'll tell your wife, it's, it's, it's my way or the highway. Okay, that type of thing. Boy, we know how to rhyme when we get mad. You'll tell her that and it can only be God's way. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to understand. It's got to be God's way. And Jesus says, I'll never cast you out. So how can you cast out your wife? How can a wife say, I'm, I, I, I want to be rid of you too? That type of thing, okay? That devil will dupe women just as much as he duped men. In fact, the Eve, Eve wasn't the only woman duped. She was just the first <laughs> in a long line, amen? amen? So don't think the devil has uh, slacked up. No, but the devil is going full mm -hmm. speed ahead. He wants your okay? prayers to be blocked. That's right. Both if if God won't yeah, hear your yeah, prayers, it gives him an open door to do more things to you. Okay. Mm. As a matter of fact, he has some women sold, and, and we're gonna we're gonna uh, segue from this. He has some women some women sold thinking that they don't need a man in their lives at all. Huh? Mm-hmm. That's true. That's right. Okay. He's got some women think that men are just brainless, stubborn brutes. They used to be good for producing babies, but now they are not even good for that. Some women think that. That's true. Some women are thinking that. So now we see women moving out of God's... You the think the devil just going to work with men? He wants to move women into positions that were more that are geared more for men. You said, well, a woman can do everything a man could. I didn't say she couldn't. God has a divine order, you all, mm -hmm. when it comes to the family. Surely women can do a whole bunch of things. You all can hold babies on your hip and, and cook at the same time. I could never do that. I'd be all oh, twisted up. I've seen you all doing that. I, I see women do amazing things. I saw a lady pushing a big basket full of food at the store. She was, I could hardly see her face. And she had three children. Two of them was on the top of the food in the basket. One was underneath the bottom. And one was in a a strap on her body, and she was on the cell phone and pushing all that with one hand. I saw this. I'm not making this up. I saw it with my own eye. I can't do that. I can't do it. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much strong. I mean, I'm not like I used to be, but I, I can't do that. My body doesn't, it, it doesn't work that way. So I know women, women, women are strong. Women, uh, uh, women can do some things, but still God has you, his divine order says you're supposed to do this and the man is supposed to do that. Spiritually, there's a reason God did this, okay? There's a reason he took the woman from Adam's rib, you're supposed to stand beside him. There's a reason for all of these things, physically, spiritually, and figuratively, eternal consequences. But going even further, some women believe that they can replace that man by moving in another female to be the man. Hmm. You see how the devil just starts doing these things? You don't like that man. He ain't no good. And then he said, uh, hey, you know what? Mm, we're going to give you a raise. You're going to make more money than this, like man. than this man. And, mm, you don't even have to wear a dress. Just get yourself a man's suit, a man's jacket and pants and Smoke a cigarette. No, smoke a cigar like the man and just be that man. And pretty soon things happen. We're seeing this more and more. To replace that void, a female assuming the role of companion as somebody's husband. 
Now they're living in a home with an immoral, same-sex lover. And because society makes it so easy to do, this is my husband. Mm -hmm. You see how the devil works his thing? Mm -hmm. But he's coming against the household of God. Yep. He's coming he's against the household of God. Now, of course, it goes much deeper than that. Uh, uh, as you all will come to see it. As I mentioned, I can't go into it all now, but we talked about it last week. We talked about Romans 1, and it tells a story completely from a slightly different angle. Uh, let me just briefly say this. Pastor, can you go to Romans 1 for me? Verse 25, 26. I know I didn't give you that one, um, but I meant to, uh, I was going to start with that, but if you could just read that. This points out what the book of Romans says about those who go for the lies of the devil. You got to be alert, you all. We got to know what the devil is doing. Mm -hmm. Romans 1, okay. verse 25, 26. Romans 1. What does that say? Just start there. Okay, Romans 1, 25. I can't read all of this. So. Romans 1, 25 to 26 says this. 25 says this. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. Who is blessed forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. now, now you said 24 and 25. No, 25. I'm sorry. 25 and 26. 26. And then 26. Mm -hmm. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. So even their women exchanged the natural use of what is against nature. Okay. 27. No, just 26. We okay. don't have to go through all that. But uh, <clears throat> 25 is talking about uh, these people they exchange the truth of God for the lie. We're here again, we're talking about the devil's lie, the truth. They exchanged the truth. God had his own order for morality, for wholesomeness, for goodness, for righteousness. The devil has his own order. So he gets you to exchange the truth of God for the lie. You start worshiping and serving the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever which is Jesus Christ, and they're talking about, for this reason, God gives people up to vile passions, and women is changing the natural use for that which is against nature. This gives us a sign to see what's going on. So you see, this aberrant behavior is all relational to not submitting to God. You see how we come back full circle to James? We come back full circle to obey, uh, to being uh, 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 obedient to God, submit to God, submitting to God, God, all these things. Uh, there, it's all throughout the Bible. This is nothing new. This is, but people don't see it. This is what we're. This, this is what's happening in society and in the world today. When God uh, uh, put in His word to submit, resist the devil, he'll flee from you. He meant that we are to submit wholeheartedly. Okay. Mm -hmm. As males, yes. As females, yes. Okay. As husbands and wives, yes. As the body of Christ, yes. All the above. If you talk to God, he's going to tell you what I'm telling you because he told us. And this is coming from him. Okay. This is what God is saying. This is in keeping with God's formula. Now, the devil has his own formula. Right. And it's very, very... Uh, uh, slightly askew to take you off track to get people to thinking that you, you can just run roughshod over a woman and then he'll re the devil will reverse that and have a woman thinking they can handle what you got what you what God meant for you to handle and they can do it God can use anybody mm -hmm. it used to be that men got all the heart attacks well welcome to the club ladies now women are getting heart attacks and younger ages. You know why? Because of the stress and the pressure of taking on a position that may not have been what God wanted, but we, you can deal with it and God will get his glory either way. But you see, God says, I don't care what that devil does, I'm going to get them well in the end. But there are some things that we don't have to do if we submit to God like he wants us to. Mm -hmm. Amen? Then if you're in that position, yes. Then if you're under stress, yes. Then if you want to take on their responsibility, but don't be fooled and let the devil put you into that position. Amen. Satan and his forces are steadily moving. They're moving forward, incrementally pushing. This is another thing he's doing, and I'm going to end, I'm probably going to have to end in a minute here. But he's, he wants to emasculate 
men. We're in an age now where men are being emasculated. Watch your children. Watch your boys. Watch what they wear. Watch the fashions. Watch the subliminal messages on TV, y'all. Mm -hmm. Come on. Okay? Don't, don't, don't. Don't be ignorant. Don't be foolish. I like, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I try not to pigeonhole people. You, you're an individual. Wear what you want to wear to a certain degree. But once I, once I sniff out that the devil is in it, mm -mm. no, 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 no. Don't dress me up in no, in no, no yoga pants as a man. Don't, no, 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 no. Okay. Don't dress me up in no skinny jeans with my little, you know. The, the cheek hanging out the back. No, 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 no. Okay? No. I know the game. Don't, no. Don't let your children do it either. Watch them with, watch your grandsons and your, watch them, watch your granddaughters. Mm -hmm. Do you know I tried to find a pair of baggy sweatpants on, 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 on the, on the uh, uh, online. online and couldn't find them? Every time I saw a baggy pair, guess who was in it? A woman. But I could find all the skin, they did skinny chicken pants that I want to wear. I could see all that stuff. Shiny, shimmery, like Liberace type of stuff. What I look like jogging the street, like, look, did that pass the joke, jogging? What, what that look like? But, but this is what they want to do to men, and this is the devil, you all. Masculate. I see these pastors up there. Up there with their red uh, Jordans on, is skinny, skinny little yoga pants. <laughs> Tell me, everybody just put your cell phone up. Let's praise him, let's praise him. I can't even get past the, the yoga pants. <laughs> How can I hear the Lord? <laughs> if that's, and if that bothers me, <laughs> I'm a pastor. How somebody supposed to come to Christ and know the word? like the world, acting like the world, talking like Come on, y'all. Now, I'm not judging people like that. I'm just saying you got to know what's oh, at the root of the it. The world, the world, the world, the world. But they want, and it's not just fashion. They want to emasculate men. They want to even feminize the male species. Bold enough to call masculine men toxic masculinity. They coined the phrase, y'all. If you're a man, they say, you toxic. <laughs> He poison. <laughs> this, this is true. Toxic men, that's what toxic mean. I mean, you're poison. Now, who said that? Did God say that? God said you're going to toil by the brow, the sweat of your brow. God, God gave man, the man the first job. God said you're going to name all the animals. I think that took some work. I think I, I think that took some brawn somewhere. I'm not telling you you're supposed to be Hulk Hogan <laughs> or, or The Rock or anybody else. But but spiritually, spiritually. But but how can they say then that toxic masculinity when you say that God meant for a man to be a man and a woman to be a woman? Problem is we got the church buying into a lot of this, you all. And that tells me that we don't know God like we said we do. Mm -hmm. You got churches buying into the world's paradigm and not God's. Amen. We got to understand it. We got to see it. This is just another angle that Satan is using to deceive man in his quest to tear down God's blessings for procreation and his people. You got to know it, y'all. He attacks the household. Everything we talked about. He attacks marriages. He attacks gender. He doesn't want you to understand that a woman is made out of two chromosomes, the same two chromosomes, two, two uh, uh, helpings of X chromosomes. He doesn't want you to know that God put an X and a Y chromosome in a man. That's the, and that what de that's what determines your gender. He wants you to think you can determine your gender. <laughs> He wants you to know that, that you can be a, a, a man today and a woman tomorrow, depending on how you feel. Or you don't need any sex at all. You're not either one. You can wear a dress and a jockey strap and a bra. <laughs> if you want to. 
I mean, that's what this, that's what that's the way that's that's the world we're living in now. I mean, I gotta tell you right, right? Mm -hmm. it's done. This is what he's doing. Okay. That's what the world is doing. That's what the devil is doing. And there are some, there are some people that who say they're Christian, they're buying into this stuff, you all. So I, I just want you all to be aware. It's what the Lord has given me. He's further trying to get you to believe his lies. As like I said, to change your gender. Overrule God's divine order. I'm going to close in a minute. So, you know, this is just another lie. It's another lie from the jumbo liar. Okay? And that's the, that's the devil. The father of lies. Don't buy into it. You need to know the truth. So I'm going to close for now. But in closing, rest assured that much of what you, uh, uh, you don't know, you won't know unless you get to know God. All right? You won't know unless you get to know God. I pray that you all join us again next time. We're going to continue because we have more to talk about. God's got more and I can't get it. I can't fit it all in. Uh, uh, God willing, if he has us back, we'll continue with knowing God is knowing truth. Amen. Amen. Pastor Harriman said he's Amen. with you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Harriman. Pastor Harriman said he's with me and I'm with Pastor Harriman. You, we got to tell it like it really is. Now, to those of you who don't know Jesus, you may not have heard what I'm saying. You, you may not have been privy to that. You may say, is that true? Well, that's what I want you to say. Is it true? Do your research and find out. Some of you all know this already. Some people may not want to hear it because of their, their own desires. But if you know Jesus, your desire is to follow him. Your desire should be to please him. Amen. And that's where we are today. This world is spiraling toward the end. We're in the end times. We're in the last days. There is nothing that the devil can try to get you to do that God can't fix for you, but you have to give him the opportunity. Amen. Amen. You've got to come to know God, and then you'll know truth. And the way you do that is to ask Jesus into your heart. You ask him into your heart. You admit that you, that you don't know, that you are a sinner, and he will come into your heart. And he will start teaching you, leading you, and guiding you. If you're ready to pray, pray that prayer, because guess what? You can't get to heaven without it. No matter if you stay the same as you are now, you think you're living a good life. When it's all over, if you have not accepted Jesus, you can't go to heaven. So you, you really have to make a decision. Do you want to just have what is in this world now? Or do you want to need, and, and, and spend, you can either trade what you have now, and, and be with the Lord forever in heaven, in paradise. Or you can make your paradise live your, as they say, live your best life now. Go ahead. Live your best life now. And then you'll spend the eternity in darkness and hellfire. And I don't think you want that. As a matter of fact, I know you, you don't want that. Amen. So you need to come to the Lord. Ask him right now to come into your heart. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I repent my sins to you right now. I believe that you are God. You died for mankind and you were raised from the dead on the third day. Show me the right way. Get me right, Lord. I'll follow you all the days of my life in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it. If you prayed that prayer, congratulations. You are now considered the child of God. He gives you a pass. He's spiritually, I mean, figuratively. Uh, he's gotten you a get-out-of-jail-free card. But guess what? You still have to work at it. You still have to want to please him. So you get yourself a holy Bible and you start reading that word day to day. And you enter into a relationship with the Lord. He starts teaching you, honing you and shaping you, showing you right from wrong as a teacher does a pupil. Amen. He walks you through this life. He gets you stronger. He takes those old inclinations away from you because now what are you? A new creature in Christ. Old things pass away. Behold, he's going to make all things new. He's going to make all things good for you. He's going to get you through the struggles. He's going to get you through your pain. He's going to get you through disappointment. He's going to get you through uh, 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 sexual uh, uh, misconduct. He's going to take all those things away from you. And he's going to hone and shape you into his child. Amen. And that's a blessing. All right, so stick with it. Stick with it. Let him work on you, and you're going to be so glad you did. Amen. So we're going to, I think I went over a little bit. We're going to pray out for today.
and I'm going to let you all have the rest of your time, but I had to get some things in. And I uh, uh, hope that you all will come back next week and we'll continue if God will have us back. If Jesus doesn't come by then, because nowadays you better be looking for him to crack the sky because there are some things happening. All right. So um, let's pray out now. Let you all have your day. Father, we thank you for this time. I thank you for your word, Lord, that it's uh, so nourishing to us, Lord. We need it. I ask you to bless everyone who tuned in today. Bless our visitors on, on uh, Facebook and, and uh, our visitors on YouTube. Bless Pastor Harriman, Lord God, and his congregation. Bless others, Lord, whose names I, I, I didn't see. But I know someone will hear this message, Lord, who needs it. We all need it. And Lord, of course, bless our regulars, our faithful Zoom crew members, Lord God, who tune in, who are trying their best to follow you. Lord, I ask you to bless each and every one of us as we get ready to leave this place. Now, may the Lord bless you all. May the Lord keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, sanctify you completely. These things we ask in Jesus' name. We all say, amen. Amen.